So just Absolutely. even saying your name, just even seeing anything with you in it and having that word, you know, because words have frequency and vibration. Absolutely. Just by the words you have in your work brings people back to center. I love that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's wonderful. And that's I totally know this. We'll like totally get into that. But um, yeah, that's why I chose the name um being because I'm like a mom of three and I found myself doing, 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 and I made a hard stop and was like, this is Darcel being like no more Darcel doing this and doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that just makes my day because the more women, my whole, I do a lot of things, but my whole, like what lights me up and you can tell, like I literally get so passionate is women remembering like their innate divine power. Yes. So many yeah. women think they're broken. Something's wrong. I was traumatized. Mm -hmm. I'm not worthy, you know, and it's my life's mission. And I know it's yours as well. We are reminding them, right? We don't do anything for them. We remind them of what has always existed within. Right. And we just help them kind of clear the junk that has right. like blinded them to what naturally their divine innate power that's within them. And like watching a woman come into that remembrance yes. is the highlight of my life. Absolutely. I'm a hundred percent with you. Absolutely. That, right? All of that just is resonates completely. Yep. I love it. It's, it's what we do. It's what we're called for. And that's why, it, you know, awakens us and invigorates us so much. Um, and even what you said about like the remind, that's also, I'm like, man, it's all about helping women to like recognize. And, you know, I love reading and writing. So I was like, let me look into the breakdown of the word recognize. And I'm like, oh, snap, recognize, like cognize, cognizant, knowing. So when you recognize or recognize something, it's a knowing, it's a re-knowing. And it's like, we all know already what we're called to. We know our path. We know the way we should take. We know who it is that needs to be in our life. We know these things on a spiritual level, but it's up to women like us to help people recognize, recognize it. And you know, that's what we're doing. So I, I love that. Absolutely. That's extraordinary. You know, when I told you when we started, I'm like, you're my people, like you're my people. <laughs> yeah. I totally we speak, agree. We speak the same language. Absolutely. And we I do. only have one level. Like I'm intense. And yeah, I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you're intense too. <laughs> me too, for sure. A zero to a hundred. Yeah. Zero to a hundred, right. And some for people sure. can't, like I'm too much, right? The too muchness. Right. But when you find somebody that will meet you like at the depths where I know, I just looked at your work and I'm like, oh yeah, she <laughs> like, this is where we live, right? Right, for but sure. But what that is, is like, I feel like we're like a lighthouse, right? Yeah. Like we live here and we stand firm and we like shine a light, like to show women, like we're here when you're ready. Right. Like that guidance that kind of brings you home back into yourself. Right. I feel like you and I are women like that. We like, we stand firm here. We right. We guide you yes. back into yourself. It's, it's so true. And I found that, you know, like for I did sure. want to ask you about your relationship with money mm -hmm. and how has that, uh, been something that you had to work on, especially like being in your own business? Has that ever been an issue for you or you always been on the right side of money? Um, yes, there's been times where I'll say, oh my gosh, you know, that feeling of like scarcity or the feeling of like, I need this to happen or I need that to happen. Um, that definitely has come up. And I think it, it goes back to like the mindset. It's all about your mindset and just reminding myself, well, if I believe that to I am love. If I believe that I am worthy and all these kind of things, then it's like, well, that has to apply um, as well to the money aspect. And I have to believe that money flows abundantly to me. I am worthy of money. And it's, again, it's all about that mindset and yeah, it has to apply across the board. What I'm saying, I believe in. Yeah. Okay. I come from a very different uh, experience from money. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, it's definitely it? been a challenge. Just severe scarcity I don't even oh, know if it was like actual like in reality scarcity but like what I was taught and shown and experienced younger right, right? I had this belief a lot and I think a lot of people have it right I'm not worthy right. um, those people are bad you know rich oh, people okay. are greedy and kind of like the societal kind of toxic money beliefs so that's right. definitely been a journey that I have been on but I'm so glad to hear I think a lot of women don't play bigger Right. For sure. Because, because of this, like, well, I don't, I'm not worthy or deserving of right. massive amounts of 
well. Right. You know? Right. So I think it's a conversation that's worth having. A lot of people are having it now because if we can get these tools to women, you know, and they can, it's all subconscious bullshit. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. How do you, and then what did you do um, to like come out of that? Girl, I have done so much reprogramming. <laughs> yeah. It was like two years ago. I made, um, every year I set intentions you know, kind of for what I want to, to accomplish or experience that year. And I, I think it was 2018. I was like, I am going to heal my relationship with money. I mean, it would right. give me panic attacks, anxiety. It was bad yeah. depression. Like, right. and it was all, my bills were always paid. It was all that tape just right. playing. And so I made a commitment and I got myself like a ton of resources and I got some courses and I, I did the work. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And so I've really been able to read, it's all a reprogram. And that's what I teach all my clients. I'm like, you are a computer system. Right. And you sure. have, you have been downloaded with a certain program. And I'm like, but all you have to do is change the program. Right. Like right. you're not stuck in any, which way you just have to, to take out the program and put a new program in. And essentially right. that's what I did. It's amazing. So powerful. Yeah. Jeez. I think if more women had more wealth, we'd have a different world. Right. You know, super different. Yeah. That's, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Tell me, um, your journey to be, did you have a life before the one you have now as far you said you had an awakening in 2018, did your life look very different or not so much or kind of what your path to where you are today? Um, it looked, it looked different. So it wasn't like in, it was more internal again, it's all about the mindset. So I had a very different mindset, um, in 2018 and it was a lot of, I'm not worthy. A lot of, mm -hmm. I'm not deserving of this. Um, not a great self image, body image. Um, you know, I had kids pretty close together, like a year and a half, two years apart. Yeah. So a lot of like drowning in motherhood, drowning in, like my identity trying to find myself after having a baby and then just as I feel like I got my footing bam another kid and I'm just like oh my god <laughs> you know I'm like man trying to find my identity again after having two children because that's an adjustment and then just as I felt like I had it together bam another kid and I'm just like oh my gosh like and when that happened I just wasn't in a good place um maritally financially spiritually I wasn't really sure of just going through a lot and having a third kid being pregnant I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna die I remember literally laying on the floor like took the pregnancy test crying my eyes out because I was like you know what I was just thinking you know maybe my husband and I were like let's do some counseling things are just not great I was like I'm gonna die here and there was this still small voice right like voice of God and it's like listen just take three minutes and just imagine if you didn't die, what would life be like on the other side if you make it out of this? And I laid there and I just thought, just that's why I'm saying the power of a seed is unmatched. The power of a thought is unmatched. So I just thought, what would life be like if I made it? What would I want? What would I want? And I said, oh, I'd want to be um, in love with my body post three kids. I'd want to be in love with my stretch marks and be in love with you know, my new identity as a mom and I'd want to be confident. I'd want to help other women. I'd want to believe that I was worthy, believe that I deserved beautiful, great and glorious things, even though it didn't look like that. But I started, you know, listening to like really good lectures by Neville Goddard, reading more books, playing by Narrow Beats, just all these things. Yeah. And literally like that was my dark night of the soul because I was rock bottom another kid, not great marriage, not great financially. And I was like, this, this is not going to work. And six months later, after doing these affirmations and shifting my mindset and constantly pouring into myself, focused on what I wanted to see, not what I was actually seeing. Um, I came out of it. And I say, I call my youngest, my Phoenix baby, because I'm like, I was incinerated that older version. And I came out of it like fire, like gold. I came out of it an entirely different person. Yeah. Entirely different. And like Darcel Bing was born in 2018. So I'm like, man, it was a lot, but that pain that I experienced has now become the medicine that I mm -hmm. offer other women and that I offer myself continually reminding myself, Darcel, if you came out of that, 
the way you did, you can absolutely come out of anything. And how was your business born? How was that journey? It was born, um, same 2018, out of mm -hmm. that, um, coming out of the fire, I started Darcel Bing Books, which was conscious books, positive psychology for children. And I did a lot of, um, it's like my curly quilly crown and I am super. I did these books that were helping kids do affirmations and love diversity, things like that. And um, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute actually picked up my books as curriculum because they were, I guess, drawn to the energy and the positivity. And then- Was so that there, the first thing you did? That was your first action after the awakening was the children's books? That was the first action after the awakening. Was I that started. inspired because the, the babies that you had? Was it, it like was. next generation? Okay. It was, and I thought to myself, well, what's the easiest and best way to package what I've learned. And especially because kids, we all know, subconscious mind is open. Yeah. I was like, oh, let me start with the children. And I started with positive psychology books, teaching, love yourself, love. And I did like curly hair, love your hair, love the way you look, love it. Be in love you with it. you animate them yourself or you found an I animator? Do. I found a, um, an illustrator on Fiverr. That's so I went on Fiverr and did um, <laughs> an illustrator. And, but I did like, I'm a poet, but first and foremost, a poet and a writer. So I did like the poetry, the writing. And then I told her like what I'd like. She did the illustrations. I put it together. And within like a month, I had my first book, like ready to go. Yeah. And it did well. So just again, the power of a seed, the power of believing I can do this thing. I do you do have it. any like around you? I see your dear mama's uh, behind you. Do you have any of the no, kids books? I don't. That's so terrible. Okay. No, let me see. Hold on. Huh? But you know what? I have my phone. So pull it up from there. Are you yeah, still writing know. them or you just have those, the ones you created? Yep. I'm still writing. I have um actually my next children's book is due to come out in February. So I still write and I, I'm still in touch with my illustrator and it's just a matter of um, timing because what I did in during 2020, when everything went nuts, I actually had my book translated into Spanish. Uh -huh. So I did like a Spanish version of my book. And then that was wonderful and beautiful. And uh, this is, um, so my curly coily crown. Oh, that's beautiful. Is it, uh, can you get it in paperback or it's only yeah, it's paperback? Mm -hmm. okay. I just pulled it up on Amazon. So okay. yeah, it's on paperback or the Kindle version and uh, trying to see. And then I did like a boy's version because, you know, boys, they go through so much with, oh, big boys don't cry and all this like terrible programming. That's yeah. not true at all. Um, so I did a book for them that's like, hey, you don't have to just be a sports star or if, you know, if you want to great, but that's not all you can do. You can also talk about like art and things like that. So I am super. That's awesome. I bought, so I have a son. My youngest is a son. So mm -hmm. Wayne Dyer has a kid's book. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, Lewis Hay has a kid's book. Oh, that's like so all, cool. Yeah. So he has all the kid's books from like the real popular, you know, spiritual writers. So Great. that's like all the books I would read him all the time were those that's types so cool. of books. Yeah. So it was like early on getting those messages downloaded about I think they intuitively know, right? Mm -hmm. They intuitively, they're already connected to spirit. And if you can keep that open longer, they'll carry it into adulthood. Right, so you true. Know? So these books are so important. I'm, ugh, that's incredible. That's really Thank incredible. You. I didn't, I didn't, I have to look into Wayne Dyer's um, children's book. I didn't know he had, I love Wayne Dyer. I didn't know yeah. he had a children's book. Oh, uh -huh. that's awesome, okay. A lot of them, a lot of the writers that you mentioned, cause you mentioned the same ones I read. A lot of them have children's books. I did not know that. Yeah. Super cool. Okay. I'll look into that. Is it new? Is Wayne Dyer's book from like a few years ago or? I don't know. Okay. I don't know how new it is as well as, you know, a couple years or whatever, but it's like relevant. Right. Okay. It teaches you, cool. It's like 10 life lessons or whatever. And it like, it's, it's, it's really cool. My son likes it. Yeah. Super but cool. I would get him all like the woo woo spiritual books. Like that's all the read books <laughs> I would read to him. <laughs> He's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, because they don't know any, but it makes sense. Right. So I know you talk about seeds. Every time I read those books to him, I know they were seeds planted in his subconscious. So even if I never read them again, he'll be connected to those ideas. Even when he's like 25, right. that seed I planted when he was three, you know, he's going to resonate with the truth of right. some experience he has or something he hears because of those moments. You know, that's right. the power that we have as parents. Absolutely. So true. So after the books, what happened? Um, so after the books, I went into, again, trying to, not trying to, but um, looking for other ways to connect with 
people on a broader scale of like, um, let me really find my tribe or get plugged into women who are also going through an awakening or women who just had children and they're struggling with that identity shift. Because again, um, as you know, having children is an identity, it's a birthing of you every single time. Yes. And uh, it's a lot to navigate sometimes because we don't, as a society, talk about um, the spiritual aspect of motherhood. We don't talk about, well, you're going to give birth to yourself as well. Mm. So um, I moved into, I started my Instagram account and this was like early 2018, 2019, started an Instagram account and really um, just started sharing again, vulnerable posts and just trying to help other women know, like, you're not alone. It's, you're not crazy. You're not going crazy. You're not being ungrateful. Things that I was told on my journey, like, oh, you you have any fear or doubt? Like when you Um, started that and like putting yourself out there and like, did anything come up for you? I I did. I had, I I had fear for sure. A fear of rejection of Mm. just like, oh, what if people say, you know, you don't know my story or like, oh, easy for you to say, because you're not a single mother or you're not um, estranged from your family, things like that. And I had to, again, constantly remind myself, everybody's journey is different. Everybody's journey is different. And, um, something that I struggled with the most was just like people pleasing was trying to structure my life and my message and my posts around, well, how will my family receive this? Or how will the church members receive this? Or how will my friends receive this? And that was my greatest struggle, um, breaking free of people pleasing and just understanding if I live for the praise of people, I will die to the praise of people. I will die from the criticism and rejection um, of people. And I had to break free from that. And, you know, along the journey, like 2019 into 2020, it was the constant recurring theme of like, you have to stop people pleasing. Um, I found that I wasn't elevating or reaching as many people as I wanted to because of the way I kept trying to structure the message or make it more palatable or make it um, appeal to this person as opposed to just being authentic, just being myself. And 2020, I really started moving into like doing workshops, just like stepping out in faith and saying, I'm going to do workshops for women and have it about um, people pleasing or being yourself, taking care of yourself, becoming yourself, things like that. And as I kept stepping out in faith, I kept jumping um, before I saw how this was going to work. That's when I really, yeah, really started growing um, by doing these like leaps of faith, quantum leaps, right? Leaps of faith. And I found that people pleasing is still the biggest theme that I post around, that I create workshops around, that I coach around. It's helping women. And I actually have some men clients too, to break free from people pleasing. And in my journey, that has been my greatest pain, people pleasing. Mm. Most of the, with my client work is uh, like worthiness. And I deal a lot with body image. That's primarily my focus with my hypnotherapy practice is helping women heal um, negative body image, which is just perception, right? right? And we go to the subconscious and we do a lot of inner child healing work because it, you know, essentially is kind of connected there to the trauma. Right. The wounding and the rejection. But again, imagine a woman who felt amazing in her body, like you were saying on the floor, you know, the pregnancy test, like, or just after the babies, wanting to feel like you just wanted to love yourself, like no matter what. Right. You know, my stretch marks, my like all that. So um, I, I work heavily with ladies. I find that that's like the number one reason that mm-hmm. stops them from like going big. Right. Right. They want to go to a, uh, an event, a party or see their family or like, and they go to get dressed and it's just soul crushing. Right. Or going shopping, you know, to buy new clothes. And then right. it's just, again, soul crushing. And so if we can get these women to like feel amazing, right. They become unstoppable. And that's Absolutely. very connected to the, to the self-love aspect. Absolutely. And at the root of um, people pleasing, which I share in workshops often at the root of people pleasing, it is the fear of unworthiness. Like the fruit of the tree is people pleasing, but the root, the foundation, the seed, it's a feeling that I have to perform to be worthy. Whether you were a kid Mm -hmm. and your mom said, 
you know, you really got praise when you made straight A's, but when you had a B, you were grounded. Like that is a C that tells you, you are only worthy if you perform right. or whether it was you were praised because you were so pretty. They loved your eyes growing up or you were the only one with sandy brown hair, whatever you were praised for. Yeah, that can absolutely be a C that tells you, oh yeah, your worth is based on how you look. So now you find yourself performing, you find yourself proving, you find yourself hustling, you find yourself um, sacrificing, doing so much just to show people I'm worthy, I'm worthy. And that presents as people pleasing, which we know people pleasing is all of those things. Yeah. Saying yes, when you mean no, um, overextending yourself, taking the blame, over apologizing, all or proving yourself, doing too much, you know, all of those things. I Looking found for that validation, like externally, right? Tell absolutely. me I'm okay. Tell me I'm lovable. Tell me I'm acceptable. Absolutely. And if I can just do a little bit more, that would really show them that, you know, this is why you should pick me. This yeah. is why I'm worthy or going after again in relationships, um, emotionally unavailable people, because mm -hmm. you want to prove to yourself, well, if this person picks me, then I must really be worth something because they are notoriously unemotionally, emotionally unavailable. So if they choose me out of all these people, if I can get them to open up, I must really be worth something. And wow. it's theme over in my life, the theme in my client's life that I kept on saying, it's like literally going after people <laughs> knowingly that, you know, even if we're like, oh, I didn't know, you know, on some <laughs> level, we all know, yeah. <laughs> and on, you know, so picking people that are not emotionally available because we feel like if they choose me, then I must really be worth something. And then what happens when you guys break up or it doesn't work out right back to square one where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not worthy. And look, this is proof because this person didn't choose me and walked away. Yeah. And it's the narrative over and over. And that's why I said people pleasing and that root of unworthiness. It is like, if you can uproot that, you will be well on your way to shifting your mind and stepping into any and everything you want and deserve. What are your best tools for your clients and your workshops? Like, what do you help to, to teach them to help them, you know, increase worthiness and disconnect from people pleasing? I do, um, meditation and a lot of, like I said, a lot of my clients do come from like a Christian background, which is totally fine and wonderful. Um, so I'm mindful of that. And I just explain, like, again, meditation is the art of observing yourself. You're not if you don't want to chant, you don't got, you don't have to chant. So whatever you're comfortable with. And I just um, share that it's the art of sitting with yourself and understanding you are not your thoughts. You are not your emotions. You're the observer, the consciousness, the energy, the spirit. Right. So meditation, um, journaling, a lot of journaling and just getting that release, moving it from the head to the heart, to the paper and getting that energy to move from the body. So yeah. a lot of journaling, a lot of meditation, um, is the meditation up. guided or silent? Guided meditation. Like okay. either um, I do a lot of walking you through visualizations because uh -huh. again, the power of the imagination and the seeds you can plant. So a lot of um, visualization. And then also I do have like the recorded meditations depending on what the element is, the medicine for it. So yeah. that, but what I have found personally is people do, which, you know, I guess it's how we're connected and wired. People do better with like the one-on-one -on -one guided meditations of having someone having presence, having someone there to hold space for you and to say, hey, like I've been there and now I'm going to walk you through and help you to be your own healer. And that's like the number one tool um, I have found with coaching clients is like reminding them that you are your own healer. You are your own guru. You are your own pastor, deacon, priest. You are your own healer every single time. And my job is to be the mirror, the vessel, the container, mm -hmm. a safe space, and to just um, be that voice to remind you that, listen, I am certain, I am so very sure that you can become all that you desire. I know it. Just like God is sure of the caterpillar becoming the butterfly. It's a knowing. It's a recognizing. It's being that reflection and saying, you, you can literally do anything you want to do. I might, you know, I can walk with you as we find the tools for it, but I am 110% sure you can be whatever version of yourself you want to be. You can. Yeah. So does your, did, did you set out back in 2018, like I'm going to start a business and I'm going to do this thing or did it kind of like naturally evolve into like Darcel being books and I'm going to just write and then like the next step be shown to you as you go or did you have like big vision picture of everything that was going to like unravel and unfold over the next few years for you? 
it was a step by step. It was, <laughs> I started with the books and then, and I think that that is for me, for my journey, that's like, again, a recurring, like all of life is these patterns and like the spiral. And it really is in my life, like, oh, you need to understand you're not going to see everything set out before you, but mm-hmm. every time you take a step, like a video game, the next step will appear, but you have to be willing to take the next step. And that's how it was. It was like, oh, I'm going to do, I'm a children's book author. And then I noticed I actually moved into, oh, there are other authors who are not sure how to self-publish. So I started coaching other writers. That's what it started as me oh, wow. helping to self-publish and helping them to um, get content developed or get their ideas. I did that. And then from there, I was like, man, I really love the one-on-one aspect of helping someone take a seed and bring it to life into a book. But little did I know, it was like, you know, it's going to be personal um, development and one thing after another. And then the post and then just being like, man, and I've honestly been coaching since college. When I really look at it unofficially, this is what I do. I've always been an encourager. I've always been someone who inspires. I've always been someone who loves to make space for people. Um, and let them know you're heard, you're safe, you're supported, because those are the things that I crave in my life. And I've always been someone who gives that to other people. And um, I share that with a lot of women. If you're not sure, what's my life purpose? What am I called to do? You can find it by looking, especially at in romantic relationships, what is it that you desire the most from another person? What is it you've told yourself What's that voice saying? Well, I just wish somebody accepted my body or I just wish somebody really loved my poetry. Whatever it is that you are desiring the most from somebody else, that is the medicine that you are being called to give yourself first and foremost, and then to offer the world. And if we can just back up and see that, like me, I always, oh, he just does it. He just thinks I'm too much or he just doesn't love me the way I want to be loved. And I just want more X, Y, Z. And then I found, oh my gosh. Okay. When I give myself this medicine, I'm actually able to offer it to other people and encourage other people to offer it to themselves and then to other people and so on and so forth. They're always a mirror for us. That's what I teach my clients too. Like as hard as it is to look at, because not only for the positive, but for the negatives, the things you don't like in somebody you know, you need to integrate and work that out too. Cause all they're doing is just projecting and mirroring back to you. So what you want from a partner, you said it beautifully. And if we can stay in a place of like observation, right. And then allow it's all feedback. That's all it is, but we're traumatized and we get, you know, cut off and disconnected. And, but all it is, is like neutral feedback. Right. And if we can stay in a place of self-worth and self-love and take in the feedback, then we can make those conscious changes right. and then elevate, you know, to next level version. Right. For sure. It's beautiful. It's complex, but it's, it's really, it's really, really beautiful when you look at how we're so interconnected and it's yeah. so many levels and again, very complex and it can be challenging, but when you can step back and look, it's like, oh my gosh, this whole system and world, it's, it's really beautiful. It really, really is. Do you find, cause I find this, like I'm an excellent coach. I love what I do. I'm good at what I do. And then to do it in my own life, like kind of like what we were talking about with the husbands, like right. I can speak all day long, right? Wisdom and tips and techniques. And then I'm in my own house and my own relationship and I'm hyper aware, right? Because it's what right. we teach all day long. So I recognize when I'm out of alignment or when I've right. said something, I instantly know that I was out of integrity, you right. know? And because when you live at a higher level and a higher level of awareness and and consciousness, like other people might be fine, but I know what just happened and I can't remain out of integrity, right? So I'll have to go address it and probably apologize or make the situation right or somehow elevate, right? So I think there's a level of your responsibility when you live at this level, For sure. you know, and it also, I'm hyper aware because this is what we do all day. Right. So it's not like ignorance is bliss, right? When we go home to our kids or our husband, like I'm aware of every interaction. I'm aware of the frequency of the words I I chose to say. I'm aware of like, I'm projecting onto my husband right now. He's fine. Right. I'm the one in an angry mood and I'm projecting (laughs) that on him. Right. And using him like, right. And you know, all this, what do you, you know, it's like, 
I feel like I have to be more responsible than someone who doesn't right. know. Do you feel absolutely. that to be true? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Especially when I am um, talking to and interacting with my husband. Again, that's the number one um, relationship that I'm like, oh my gosh, because I'm evolving in X, Y, Z. It's <laughs> like, yeah, especially because I know the power of words. I know the power of seeds. This is like you said, this is what we do. So I have to be so mindful and I do have a heightened awareness. And sometimes it annoys me being honest. It really annoys me because I'll be like, oh, it was so much easier when I didn't know. Because yes. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, but now that I do know, seriously, it's like now that you do know, you can't just be, you know, going in here arguing and doing crazy stuff because you know that everything you're saying is a seed. And especially if you know that the other person, you know, like I said, he's a wonderful guy. He's not, a, he's a great person. So it's like, you know what you're doing is not conducive to health for him personally. It's yeah. not conducive for your health because you're elevating your blood pressure, the, all the cortisol is being released. And it's like, since you know that, yeah, you have a greater responsibility to be the peacemaker and to be the one who initiates communication, especially if you know that the other person is not as well versed in communicating. And right? like, sometimes it is annoying because I'll be like, oh, why does it have to be me? And it's like, well, it's what you chose. You know? I know. Like sometimes <laughs> I just want to be a jerk, right? I just want right. to be a jerk and blame my husband. Right. And then I'm sitting there going, I know this is all about me, right? Everything right. that I'm projecting on him has nothing to do with him. I'm the asshole. I'm right. the one, right? Yeah, it's right? Crazy. But it's just, I just want to sit in my pity party. But when you know better, you know, it's like, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, if you know better, I think it was Dr. Maya Angelou, like if you know better, you have to do better. And yeah. otherwise, again, um, because I know, we know the power of seeds. I know that what I'm planting is going to bear fruit. I know this. It's not like I'm guessing or I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, no, I know that every seed I'm planting, especially in my marriage, every single seed that I am planting is going to grow. Is this fruit that I want to eat? And I, it's just like, oh, but you know, you got to sit with it and then come back to it and just be like, all right, Darcel, breathe, do some breath work and right? be that, be that bigger person. I think that because we're held to that and because I act on it, right. I, if I ever feel out of integrity, like that never sits right. And I will take the action to, to correct that. I just, you know, when you're hypersensitive or sensitive to energy and all, you know, so I'll, I'll do what I need to do to correct the situation. And what that does though, that invites my husband I'm, I'm showing how to model right how to be in a mature respectable relationship I was wrong and I realized I was wrong and I was projecting onto you and I apologize I'm willing to look at my own self in this way in this way in this way right I'm going to do the work to integrate that when you come to somebody with that you know like he just looks at me and goes okay you right. know like <laughs> but right. what that does is that shows his subconscious too, like right. that's downloaded, right? And I'm sure he'll use that. And I do right. that with my kids too. I'm not afraid to apologize or say I was wrong. Or I'm very human in front of them. Right. Because I want them to see the pattern of how a mature relationship happens or just even yes. human interactions. We mess up, but right. don't ever be afraid to come back and have right. a conversation about it or apologize if that's necessary, right? Absolutely. You know? Yes great lesson, great lesson for them. Yeah. Same way. And like you said that, um, that encourages me too. like, like I said, in the beginning, some days when I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's 12 years. We're just at different levels. What am I going to do? Am I going to leave? Am I going to stay? That also <laughs> reminds me, I'm like, you know what? Remember that this is a great garden. This is a great field to plant seeds and see the power of intentional gardening. You can plant seeds and see the power of, again, honoring where he's at, um, learning acceptance, learning to relinquish control, learning to not be judgmental and say he is wrong, his way is wrong, I'm the only one, because that's literally the same thing that religions all over the world do and other people, I'm right, only me, you're wrong. So it's reminding myself, I can plant these seeds even in the place that is frustrating me the most currently, I can plant these seeds and say, because this person is worth it, because he's worth it, because the relationship is worth it, I can plant seeds of non-judgment, of acceptance, of learning to let go. And above all, remember, like you said, he is a mirror. All of these things that are annoying me and triggering me 
about him. That is where I need to do my shadow work and figure out where is this stemming from? Why am I so bothered by this? Why is it so triggering to me? And as I do that work and find, oh, it's because, you know, oh, this person did this to me when I was a kid. And I felt like, oh man, now no one will ever like me. I'm being bullied. It's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Now let's work on healing that. And then the next time it won't be as triggering or as annoying. But again, it's easy when you're with clients or sitting on this beautiful uh, podcast with you to talk about it. But then when application is just like, oh my God. Oh yeah. Just wait till your kids get older. Oh my gosh. I can't. Will- <laughs> they will show you every unhealed oh, man. part of you. I can't, like, I have a six-year-old. My daughter's six and the other two are boys. But even now at six, she says some stuff and I'm like, what? But I'm doing like conscious parenting, like no spanking or anything crazy like that. And even so, I'm like, man, first thing I say when I was a kid, I could never have blah, blah, blah. And then I have to stop and think, wait a minute. But was that healthy though? Was that healthy that I wasn't allowed to voice my concern or feelings and I had to just you know no stop that be quiet whatever and I have to say well I'm choosing to do it this way for a reason but yeah children oh my gosh that's that's I can't even imagine when they're older because even now I'm like sheesh Uh, but yeah (laughs) the teenage years right my husband and I we almost divorced like twice in our 18 years one was a few years ago and it you have to discern like you were talking about do I leave do I stay Like you have to discern, I had to discern, am I just running away because something's uncomfortable? Right. Right? Because looking at the other person doing the shadow work, none of that is fun or comfortable, right? There's usually pain and hurt and tear, right? And unearthing of some garbage inside. It's much easier. It seems much easier to just quit and run, right? right? It's not working out. We're done. Right. And so we were, or I was, I was like, I was throwing the divorce word around, right? And um, because I was really unhappy and then something happened. I think I had like a mini awakening Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God, this isn't even about him. (laughs) This is about me. I'm uncomfortable, I'm unhappy. And I was just, you know, threatening to, to just end it. Right. And I softened, I apologized. And then I went to work. And that work was not easy, but I can tell you our marriage got a hundred percent better because I think when one partner commits to doing the work, the other partner, you, you almost have to, if it's going to work right in their own way, whatever that looks like. So I got to work and I didn't see him do anything, but I can tell you our relationship got much better. I don't even know if he did anything, but I changed, (laughs) I changed. And that was what's important. Right. Exactly. So like, um, I have a whole new perspective on my relationship now because I was willing, but it's easy. It's easy to cut and run and run right. away because we're uncomfortable. For sure. Right. You know? Clean, I, you know, it's cleaner in a way, cleaner. It's like that clean break and you can just, but, but nobody, well, I shouldn't say nobody, but it's not fun to sit with yourself and to face yourself God, and no. to like <laughs> really you know, smell your own stuff and be like, oh my gosh, like this is what I've been doing. And especially I feel like for women that are healers, for women that have had a spiritual awakening, it gets even more challenging because you feel like, wait a minute, I'm a coach. I'm coaching other women about these things. Why am I still being triggered by it? And you, um, what I have found personally is there's this feeling of um, isolation because you know better. Because you are called to do this work, you start feeling like, oh, well, I'm a healer, so I shouldn't be hurting. I'm mm-hmm. a fixer, so I, I obviously can't show up broken. And I'm like, man, that lie is what keeps people feeling rejected and hopeless and in despair because you, you know, this lie that tells you because you're a coach or because you're a whatever, you can't hurt. Totally false. And the moment I kind of like face that about myself that I was feeding myself this lie ego that was telling me you have to show up perfectly and you you know you can't post that Darcel. you just posted three posts ago that you have coaching slots available and now you're posting about rejection or hurt and it's like oh I've actually found that to be some of the greatest medicine that I have to offer showing up and saying yes I'm a healer but I also hurt yes I'm a fixer but there are days that I sometimes feel broken and embracing that and saying but 
I can feel this. There's duality. I can feel this thing and still show up powerfully and amazingly because I know who I am at my essence and at my core. And I am not this emotion that I'm feeling or this thought that I'm having or this trial that I'm going through. I'm something so much greater um, than that. And now I just have to take that and apply it to the relationships, friendships, husband, all of those things and say, I have to believe that whatever behavior they're showing, nothing, we're not talking like physical abuse, things like that, but um, whatever he's going through, it's not, it doesn't say anything about my worth. Whatever my friend is experiencing or doesn't want to continue on with me in a friendship, it doesn't say anything about my worth, Mm. but it says something about a wound that I am harboring because why am I so triggered and why is my whole world falling apart? Because this friend has said, I don't want to be friends anymore why is it so detrimental? And then that's when I start saying, oh, snap, maybe there's a feeling uh, or there's a wound of rejection, fear of rejection or failure, things like that. So yeah, there's always some kind of healing that can be found like in that hurting. Thank you for doing that. I also am very authentic, genuine, fully human. Right. Because I want to see that in other people. I, I do that myself as well as you, you know, we, we, we are this and that, you know, right. <laughs> and it's always, right. and if we're only showing people one side, it's unrealistic, right. it just yeah. is. Like I had a guest last week that I did a podcast with and she nursed her baby. Her baby was resting in the bed and she, her baby woke up and she nursed her like, you know, right. off camera. So you don't right. see, but it was like, that's what we need to see. She's a mom of a new baby and she's doing an interview with me. And it was like, her baby yep. needs to be. And it was like, I, I paused and I was like, thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. Because anyone who's watching, like we've like taken out the realness of being a human. Yeah. Here's my most pretty picture. And here's right. me on my greatest day. And then I keep all this to myself right. so that people don't have a full picture of what it looks like or, you know, what you're right. supposed to be. And then you feel like crap, right? Right. <laughs> So it's like us and I, hopefully more people are joining that it's like, I'm, I'm a full human being, right? I, you know, I encompass both everything and all, right? And here's all of me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, um, I found also that it, for me, like that people pleasing of trying, you know, I figured, oh, wow, people pleasing is manipulation because I'm trying to manipulate somebody into seeing me wow. as a and that like I never would have been like, oh yeah, I'm a manipulator. Yeah. Um, so that like blew my mind to be like, oh my gosh, Darcel, when you are people pleasing, despite your intentions of like, no, no, I just want to be pleasant and I just want to say yes to everything. It's like, well, no, no, since you're not coming from a place of authenticity and honesty, you are literally trying to control another person's perception of you, which is manipulation, like Webster's Dictionary that's the definition. And once I realized that I was like, man, you know, I have work to do. And it led me right back to wanting control because I grew up with a um, wonderful father, my best friend, wonderful, wonderful man, a wonderful mom. Um, but my father was chronically ill, chronically terminally ill. And at probably like age five, I came, I understood, oh, he, at any day he could die at any point. And because of that, I grew up not feeling safe. Like I had it, like, again, my family was loving, loving, so love, so much love. My dad was a chef, so much food, games, fun, but my nervous system, sometimes I'd be woken up at night and he'd be going to the ER. He'd be staying for a couple of weeks or I'd come home from school with a great day and I'd hear, oh, dad's in the hospital. So I grew up not feeling safe on a biological level. Like Mm -hmm. I did not feel safe. And how that presented in my life was like, oh, I'm going to people please, because if you like me, you're probably not going to kill me or turn on me or leave me. And that's what made me feel safe. And again, I didn't figure this out, this connection, probably until like two years ago (laughs) in 2020, like when everything happened and I had time to really sit, I realized even in my relationship choices, I have always chosen what was safe, not necessarily best, not necessarily um, you know, the most compatible, but safe, whatever felt safe in friendships, whatever felt safe in jobs, whatever felt safe. I want it to be, I sing, I want it to be like a Broadway star, but I was like, eh, there's too much rejection that's tied up in that, you know, I might get chosen. I might not. So I went with, again, what was safe. And when I talked to a lot of clients, 
this theme of yeah. settling, settling. And then once you dig into that, well, why are you settling? Because it's safe. Well, why don't you want to go for that job or start your business? Because it's safe. This is safe. And safety in that sense is like the dream killer. Yeah. Safety is a dream killer. And it takes so it takes a lot of work to rewire your system to understand taking chances, although it doesn't feel safe, it's actually for our betterment. It's the yeah. best thing for us. Yeah. And we need more women that are doing that. Right. Because that really gets you in touch with your aliveness. Yes. And you're creating these really impactful things. Right. It can help more humans, right? When we stay small, which small is safety, right? Sa same thing. Uh, we're not helping anyone. You're, no. you're just not, right? It's only when you go big. It's only when you step out and you're like, I'm going to write these children books. Right. You know, or I'm going to set this up or I'm going to set that. Like only you were talking about taking leaps. Yeah. That's what that is. And Absolutely. that's how we heal ourselves right. and others. Right. Absolutely. And even what, and I love what you're doing, like being so honest, being so vulnerable, your podcast, your posts, all of that is necessary. Every single person moves the needle. And the more people that like get on board and this light train and show up. And again, some people I know are introverts. So they're like, well, I don't want to air my business on, you know, social media, whatever. And again, it comes down to, well, stay in your lane, find what what does it look like for you? What does vulnerability look like for you? But at the end of the day, it's all about like action. Everybody has something that they can be doing. Every single person, even I if- I think intention say, too. Like you mentioned right. someone like, oh, I don't want to air my business. I would invite that person. That was my client. Let's go deeper. And <laughs> right. Why? What's, why not, right? Is right. it a privacy issue? Is it an honoring of your own boundaries? Because if it is, cool. If it's not, and it's fear-based- Right. Right. Rejection. I might be hurt. Someone might respond negatively. Right. If the, I don't want to air it. Right. So you really have to like, you can't even take it at face value. You right. and I, like, we got to go deep. What's underneath right. and where is it coming from? Right. And there's always something underneath. And I think that's when sometimes I'll go through these moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, whoo, humaning is a lot. Like, <laughs> human, I'm like humaning is a lot. It's so much energy because it really is like, everything you interact with or eat or experience, there's always something deeper. There's always something, somethinging underneath whatever it is you're looking at. And it's again, just being kind, kind to myself, being patient and realizing that, okay, I don't always have to be doing something. Mm. I don't always have to be reading the newest book. I love reading, but like reading the newest book or listening to the latest podcast or taking the latest masterclass or enrolling in the latest course. I don't always have to be doing something. I can really and truly just like, there's healing even in simply being. There's healing I have found in just being and laying down that book for a week and laying down social media and logging off and just doing these things. There's so much healing in that. But again, it goes back to like not being afraid to do the work, not being afraid to look at your own stuff and say, okay, what is this really trying to tell me? Absolutely. I want to honor your time. Are you? Do I'm good. You, yeah, my, okay. I have my husband take the kids out. So <laughs> otherwise. Okay. I have a few more questions. I just want to be honor. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I wanted to, I wanted to take your journey to, to where we are. And then I saw on your website, you have a few things I wanted to know about the, well, the reinvent her process mm -hmm. and the compassion alchemy course. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. If, if you want to, keep going on your business journey. And then maybe those two things will come up along the way. So we have the books mm -hmm. and then you were self-publishing coaching clients. Mm -hmm. And then right. how did that evolve into your next chapter? So um, once I did the coaching, self-publishing coaching, I recognized that. So I saw that knowing, was reminded of that knowing that, oh, this is what I am called to do, which is like coaching and teaching and sitting with someone and providing a container, a safe space and saying, okay, I see where we're at. I see what you're experiencing right now. And at the time it was like, okay, so you have a character in your book and it's not developing the way you want to. And then I was able to help clients get to the next level by saying, but what do you want? What is it you're really wanting? Um, what are you wanting out of this book? What are you hoping to see? And when I saw the you know results that they were getting, yeah. I was like, well, wait a minute, maybe this is bigger again, being curious and saying, maybe this is bigger than just self-publishing coaching. Maybe this is like 
I'm supposed to be doing this in another way, which is like personal development. And from yeah. there, um, 2020 hit, you know, everything that went down. And I was like, really sitting with myself. So much happened in that year as we don't need to rehash. We all know. And it was like another awakening. I'm not, like I started deconstructing, deconstructing further and really saying, well, what am I on this earth to do? What am I really doing? Am I 110% happy with the books and with book events and with self-publishing coaching? And the answer was no, it wasn't truly bringing me to life. And there was more that I could imagine. So in 2020, I moved into kind of like trying different things. So first I did music. Um, I am like a writer, singer. So yeah. I started writing and I got into the studio towards the end of the year and then released my first single. And then I released another single and I'm like, okay, this feels right. I'm getting there. And from there, I noticed I was really coaching a lot of women on pursuing their dreams. Cause they were like, oh my gosh, wait a minute. So you're an author and you're a mom of three and your kids are, they're all under five. And you're like a singer, a worship leader at the church and you're writing songs. And now you're releasing songs. And I noticed that women were being attracted to me who were stuck in motherhood, feeling like all I am is a mom mm. or I can't pursue my cupcake business because I have three kids under three and I'm just a mom and I'm just a wife. These pains that I had found the medicine for more and more people were being attracted in my life that were going through that. And I would you know, talk or go on Zoom, coach, did like the workshops. And I found, okay, I love, I love, like you said earlier, watching women awaken to their power and potential. And I noticed that the theme in my life was metamorphosis, was helping women who not in the caterpillar phase anymore, but they were in the pain that comes from being a butterfly that has you know when butterflies when caterpillars become butterflies they melt down into goo yeah. which I imagine is painful and I noticed the women in my life were in that phase where they are the butterfly but they're still trapped in the cocoon mm -hmm. so on some level they're still thinking like a caterpillar although they have all the hardware and apparatus of a butterfly so unofficially coaching and let's meet up and then doing the workshops and in 2021 I was like all right I am ready to do, to have my own metamorphosis and come out officially as like, Hey guys, I am a self-love coach. I'm a mindset coach. And that's when I like, you know, made sure my posts were in line with what I'm talking about, specifically branding all of like the business side of being creative. Um, just doing that. And from there, I came out with my two coaching programs, which the first, um, compassionate alchemy. I call it like a, it's a course, right? But it is the way that I literally came out of my cocoon by compassionate alchemy. What is that? When we think of alchemy, it's, it's a buzzword right now. <laughs> it's really trendy, but alchemy, it's taking what you have and turning it into something else. I think mm -hmm. of Jesus. Jesus was the original alchemist when his first miracle turned the water into wine. I think of like, well, there's a reason that was written as the first miracle. There's a reason it wasn't healing the blind or whatnot. And I'm like, that is the power of taking what you have, which obviously water has the chemical property to be wine if it is alchemized. And when we see that happen, I started saying, this is what I can do in my own life. This is what you can do. And I started um, helping women with compassionate alchemy. And for me, what compassionate alchemy is, it is learning to turn comparison these were like the big four that I found as a mom as a woman as a wife comparison judgment perfectionism and guilt Ooh. those four things plagued me when I had my children oh my gosh well Susie down the road has six kids and her kids are reading at age two <laughs> and they're doing like all of this stuff and Susie is the nicest lady in the world she wasn't judging me. It was me yeah. comparing myself to her and then saying, oh my gosh, just so much judgment. Oh, Darcel, you should be further along. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. And then perfectionism, doing something and, oh, it's just not right. Or I can't launch this thing. I can't make this post. And then guilt. 
oh my God, I yelled at my kids today. I'm terrible. I didn't feed them the alkaline <laughs> mushroom smoothie, whatever. And once I said, okay, I am an alchemist. I'm going to tap in and alchemize those things. And I, through meditation, through journaling and through coaching of myself and healing myself, I learned and was able to also provide a container for women, which is what I do to say, listen, you can alchemize comparison into compassion. You can alchemize judgment into wild, expansive joy. You can alchemize perfectionism into passion. You can alchemize guilt into grace for yourself. And with those four elements, like as a mom, as a wife, my life has transformed and the women that I work with, they've experienced it too. It's all about understanding. You don't need anything outside of yourself. You don't need, it's not, oh, if my husband would act right, if only my kids would do right, if my job would get its act together. It's literally whatever you have going on internally, you can take what you have and turn it into what you want. You don't need- Let me ask you, did you have that mastered before you created the course? Like, did you have that unlocked before you offered it to other women? I will say it like this. So there's a saying that says practice makes the master. Yeah. And I was comfortable enough with it to where I was like, I'm not feeling around in the dark anymore. Yeah. Mastered, I would say not necessarily because even now I don't, I still don't feel like, you know, I'm a master because just the other day I was triggered and I was like, oh man, I really wish my coaching business was doing <laughs> like blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, well, there we have it right there. And that now I'm able to catch myself and offer yeah. passion. But, um, I would say I'm a master in a way, but you know, every master is still a student. Yes. Which is what makes them a master. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like it's more of a daily practice. Like I have all the wisdom and I have all the tools. And I absolutely. have mastered it, but I, every day I practice it. <laughs> absolutely. And that's, and I mean, on, ultimately like you and I can't lead anywhere, anyone, anywhere we have not been like, not saying we got there and conquered, but I've been there, you know, and that's what I found in my search for like, I'm just looking for someone to walk me through this. I found people that hadn't necessarily like been where they're trying to lead me. And if you haven't been there, how are you going to yeah. like, how are you gonna lead me there? You know, you can, you can know in theory, but if I'm entrusting you to take me to the other side, I am trusting that you have, you have yourself gone to the other side. What you did when you got there, I don't really care. I just want to know that you've been there and you know, and that's what we do. That's why I said, I tell clients straight up, I have an undergrad degree in psychology, but I am not a licensed therapist. I am not a psychiatrist, psychologist, but I am a woman who has been through something. I have been transformed. And now I'm going to provide a safe space for you yourself to go through the metaphor metamorphosis with support. But I am not doing anything. I am not making you into anything. All of the magic is from you. All the healing is from you. And being a woman, just being upfront with them like that and explaining I'm a woman who's had a transformation in my mind, in this day, I believe women like you and me are 10 times more powerful than a licensed whatever. Right. Not to discredit their education, but it's like a standard traditional education. And when you meet up with a real human being that has lived through some shit and can walk you through it, I don't think there's anything powerful. You'll never get that in the office of a licensed psychiatrist, right? Just because they have a degree. But when right. you have a lived experience with someone who can guide you, right. that's right. magic. 